This video is about recovery of lithium ion batteries that have been deep cycled or over discharged. And for this example, I'm going to use the battery that came from this uh, solar porch light or security light. Unfortunately, every single one of these that I've ordered, the battery arrived flat dead. So here's the battery. Now this is a 14500 size lithium ion battery and there it is, 400 milliamp hour, 14500. Who knows what the brand is, it's probably just generic. Now I'm going to measure the voltage of the battery and this applies to 18650s or any size lithium ion battery. And this one's a little better, it's 0.17 volts, I've seen them pretty much zero. Basically, when a battery's run down that low, you can pretty much guarantee that there's going to be damage to the cell. A lot of times, these batteries will have capacity remaining, even though they're damaged, and they can still be used. It all depends. There's a lot of variables, a lot of factors. But what I'm going to show you to, is how to recover, safely recover, a lithium-ion battery that's been over-discharged, even all the way down to zero volts. So first, I'm going to take my power supply. Now, uh, you need a programmable bench power supply or a variable bench power supply. Uh, to do this safely and you should never charge the batteries unattended you should always supervise the process because these cells are like little firecrackers they can go off they can cause all kinds of problems before attempting something like this I would suggest reading up on these cells on the internet lithium ion cells and they can emit extremely toxic gas that's worth reading up on also it's extremely dangerous and so that's why when recovering a battery like this, it should always be done under supervision. If you think the battery is going to rupture or get hot or anything like that, just take it outside immediately. Don't leave it in the house and clear the room, open the windows if you suspect this happened. And that is unlikely to happen, but even happening one time is one time too many. So that's why I put the warning in the video. I'm now going to hook up my variable power supply. I'm just using this one here. It doesn't really matter what kind of use. This one's actually powered by solar. And uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to program the voltage and I'm going to program the current. And you definitely need to be able to do both or don't, don't attempt to recover a battery unless you can control both of those values, the voltage and the current, very carefully. And I hope this footage is good enough. But here's my power supply. I'm going to go to constant voltage and I'm going to set it to about, you know, not quite 4.2 volts. This type of battery, a lithium ion battery, generally goes to 4.2 volts, but I'm not looking to fill it all the way up. I just want to recover it to a safe voltage. I'm going to go to constant current and I'm going to turn it down all the way. And I think I will do 20 milliamps, although really let's try 10 milliamps to start. So that's very little current. 10 milliamps is tiny. The reason you start with a very low current is because with a cell like this, if you really pile on the current when it's deep discharged, it can rupture or get hot or explode and it's very dangerous. So the power supply needs to have the ability to limit the current by limiting the voltage. And this little power supply here actually has that, but you can use any kind of current and voltage limited power supply. It doesn't matter. Now I'm going to attempt to connect the battery. And it's a little bit hard with these alligator clips. The power supply is currently on, as you can see by the red light. All right, now as you recall, we measured this cell at about... Um, 0.7 volts, 0.17 volts or something like that. So it was very, very low. So let's see what it does. Okay, and you can see the voltage is rising very quickly. We're up to 0.68 volts and climbing. And you can see that at first, the voltage goes up very, very quickly. And it's effectively though at zero amps. The amp meter on this power supply is not able to really measure tiny amounts of current. It's probably around 5 to 10 milliamps, which is tiny. But you can see how quickly that voltage skyrockets up. And that is why you want to charge it slowly. Uh, the other reason is, uh, well, other than safety, is to prevent damage to the cell. If you have a huge inrush current into a cell that's in a condition like this, you can destroy the cell and permanently damage it even more than it already is. So I'm just going to let the voltage come up. And this, this part can take a while, but the voltage you want to achieve and uh, on a cell like this is 2.8 to 3 volts is what I like to get to. And I'm careful until I get to about 2.8 to 3 volts, then you can slightly increase the current a little bit. Uh, not very much, but something really small in relation to the capacity of the cell. 
This is a very small cell, only 400 milliamp hours, and it's probably even less than that after it's been deep cycled. So I would still say uh, around 100 milliamps would be the most that I would go on a cell of this size or probably even less than that. I will leave this cell charging on the power supply, but I'll be keeping an eye on it. And I'm going to wait for it to get to a safe voltage. And then I'll try to get it up into the 4 volt range and charge it from there. And once I'm sure the cell is not badly damaged, I can use it as normal. In this case, I'm going to go up to about 4 volts, charge it up to about 4 volts. And if it holds the charge overnight, I'm going to reinstall it in the solar light. And hopefully I'll be able to use it for a while. Who knows how long it will last though. You can see in the background, I'm putting in less than a third of a watt into this cell. Of course, there's some inefficiency in this power supply. It's wasting some of the power. So very, very tiny amount of power. It's now approaching two volts. I have slightly increased the current, but it's still very tiny. And as you can see, the voltage has gone up from almost nothing to two volts very, very quickly. So it'll probably take 15 minutes for this cell to recover up to a safe voltage, probably around three volts. And at that point, I'll just try to use it like a normal cell, but I'll be cautious with it. And a lot of times you'll find these cells, if you, char if you charge them very, very carefully from a deep cycle condition, they will still be usable. You'll still be able to use them. They'll still have work. They'll charge to the correct voltage, but they will have certainly lost part of their capacity. So the summary of this video is when recovering a lithium ion cell that has been deep discharged, possibly down to zero volts, first of all, um, do not use a high current to charge. Use a very, very tiny current. Make sure you use a programmable power supply that can limit the voltage and current. Always supervise the cell. Basically, that means don't leave the cell charging unattended because you never know what it's going to do. And I suggest marking the cell with a permanent marker, maybe an X and the date, just to remind you that that cell is suspect and was deep cycled and is considered to be damaged. It's still probably useful, but you should still uh, make a note that it was damaged. And just a summary on the voltages. It doesn't really matter what the uh, cell's voltage is when you start. I've had them go down almost zero volts and I was still able to recover them. This also applies to lithium iron phosphate chemistries, but again, the cells are gonna be permanently damaged. You wanna to try to get very slowly or as slowly as possible to a safe voltage, which would be around 2.8 to three volts, and then slightly increase the current, but still use a small current. Once the cell gets into say around a four volt range, you could then go ahead and try to charge it in a normal charger and maybe do a cycling test on it. I'm not gonna do that. I'm simply gonna charge this to around four volts then I will place it inside the solar light you saw earlier, and I will simply uh, hope that it works. And if it doesn't, I'm just going to have to buy a replacement, but at least I tried. On the display, you can see that the voltage is now around 2.35 volts. It's now taking a really long time for the voltage to rise. That's actually a good thing. What that means is that even though the cell was deep cycled and probably damaged, it is now taking an actual charge. If the voltage skyrockets to around 4 volts under almost no current, I can pretty much assure you the cell is toast, it's ruined, but you can certainly still give it a try and hope for the best, maybe cycle it a few times and maybe it'll come back. But at that point, if you see the cell acting that way, most likely it's damaged for good. There's nothing you can do about it. This cell is not acting that way and it's actually stalling at about 2.36 volts and very slowly increasing, which means there is gonna be some capacity in the cell and whether that's enough to run a solar light overnight, I don't know, I guess I'll find out. I'm not going to show the rest of the charging process because it's very boring. It will simply creep up to about 4 volts and then I'll consider this cell recovered and I'll put it into the solar light and hope that it works. Another note to keep in mind is the power supply voltage will be off from what the battery is actually at. Usually it's a little bit higher. It's not a very good connection. I have those alligator clips and there's a magnet. It's not very good. So obviously the cell is probably something like 2.30 volts or 2.35 and not what the power supply is actually showing, but it's close enough. This was supposed to be a short video, but I thought I would throw in one more bit of information. When charging batteries like this, you can do what's called a four-wire measurement. A four-wire measurement simply means that you charge through two dedicated wires, and then you measure the voltage through two also dedicated wires. I will go ahead and give that a try. Okay, so you can see the voltage did not match. The voltmeter is actually quite accurate and it was about 2.41 volts so it's about 0 0.03 0 0.04 volts off from what the power supply is reading and that is actually normal and expected assuming the voltmeter was accurate which it should be fairly accurate because i've calibrated it previously using a voltage reference source 
the voltmeter is showing about 0 0.04 volts lower than the power supply says it's putting out. That is actually normal. Part of that difference in reading could be because the voltmeter and the power supply readout are not at the same level of calibration. But a good amount of that variation is going to be because of a simple thing called Ohm's Law. If you're interested in electronics, solar, batteries, and so forth, it's very, very good to look up Ohm's Law and take a look at that and just study it. It's a very simple mathematical formula and it is extremely useful and it really helps understand what's going on when you have batteries, charge controllers, and various electrical loads. You do not need to go to college to learn all of these things. You can just look them up on your own time and learn over time. My dad was actually an electronics engineer. He designed extremely complex circuits and he even invented and sold his own products, electronics, and he never went to college. So you can learn all this stuff on your own time as you see fit. I hope this video was helpful to somebody. Thanks for watching and I'll see you later.